Right. Well, you know, I, I think the, the billionaires are getting ready to flee. The, the fiat billionaires are getting ready to flee. There are many billionaires in our group right now have billions of sats and they're um, going to stay right here for Renaissance 2.0. We're creating it. Uh, the incredible shrinking dollar is so obvious because of Bitcoin. So, uh, w you know, Bitcoin is exposing and revealing the truth. And the truth is obvious to the likes of Richard Branson, who, by the way, is a very early holder of Bitcoin and accepted one of the very first companies in the world to accept Bitcoin back in like 2011 or 12. So, yeah, 2012 for, for Virgin Galactic. And the thing is, like, he, he's seen the writing on the world, on the, on the wall. You better escape while you can. So if they, um, you know, I, if maybe their plan is like, they see the writing on the monetary wall. They see the incredible shrinking dollar. They see their privilege ending. They see the end of, you know, the Cantillon effect, and they're going to get the hell off this planet. Yeah. It's amazing that the, uh, Virgin Galactic took Bitcoin to secure places on <laughs> his uh, space shuttle. And, uh, he converted it immediately to, uh, fiat money. He didn't hold any on this balance sheet. So the people who bought those tickets when Bitcoin is a few hundred dollars, uh, are probably regretting that choice. He talked about people wasting money on buying a toaster or a camera with Bitcoin back in 2011, 2012. Imagine putting up a quarter of a million dollars or half a million dollars for two seats back then would now be worth, uh, over a billion dollars. And of course they didn't keep it in their balance sheet either. So, uh, that's the way things were back in 2011. Their emphasis on payments was really strong at that time. And, uh, digital gold, as we now have come to understand more fully was still not firmly entrenched in the mindset. Right. You know, it was the Winkle Vi, the Winkle Voss twins who bought two tickets aboard this. They spent, I think 215 Bitcoin each to secure a spot. So that would be worth, um, millions and millions and millions of dollars today. So, uh, uh, they, but they have plenty, but yeah, I guess, um, I think it was via BitPay, right. Mm. That, um, Virgin Galactic had a deal. Richard Branson was an investor and then, but of course, um, you know, uh, Roger Ver kind of, uh, blew that company up too. And, um, I want to kind of segue to the incredible shrinking dollar, you know, you have this, uh, world reserve currency still, you know, having an identity crisis, trying to figure out kind of how to, how to piece together this empire, this disintegrating empire. Oh yeah. Well, you know, all that money printing, uh, went to China and now it's coming back in the form of higher prices and a structural it's secular. It's not temporary. And it's the beginning of uh, an inflationary era. The only thing we have to look for to really confirm this would be a, the bond market and B the U S dollar. So the U S dollar is moving up, which would imply deflation. So that's giving us a counter signal. And also the bond market, you know, continues to trend higher, uh, the 10 year, you know, is it going to go below 1%? I mean, you know, it could, I suppose. But at some point it does run out of uh, speed. It's a lot closer to the end of that cycle than, than the, uh, even the near to the end. It's, it's getting down to the very bitter end. And then we enter a new cyclical, more inflation oriented time. And if you look around the world, Stacey, and you see France and other countries are completely in open revolt due to the cost of food now getting to a point where it's causing food insecurity around the world. Uh, many, many millions of people in the last few months have now entered into what's called food insecurity. So the price of food has gone up beyond their ability to survive. We saw this in Egypt right before Mubarak was overthrown during the Arab Spring. And we've seen this before. We saw it in Athens, Greece. We've seen it happen. Uh, the U.S. is insulated to some degree, but there was six trillion dollars sent out in stimulus. Um, a lot of people paid down their credit cards, but they're starting to travel now. Flights are, domestically in the United States are totally booked up 100% capacity. Um, I think international travel maybe isn't as easy. Um, but the, 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 um, the freight costs, the containers from China, from Shanghai to Los Angeles are up 500% in the past year. 
All right. It's a, uh, and even adjusting for you know the collapse in trade last year for some bit of it, like even back to 2019, it's way up. Volume is up from the previous all-time high. The previous all-time high in volume of actual goods coming from China to you know Los Angeles is um, was in 2017. Now the 2020 passed it to June 2020 passed it by uh, 26 percent. Mm -hmm. So all of that stimulus, all of that printed money, is making its way to China. Um, how long they continue to send us their goods for uh, this incredible shrinking dollar, we don't know. But that is the 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 spanner and the works of of this whole plan <laughs> to have everybody have UBI and free money and all sorts of stuff. We'll see. But um, yeah, you know, Max and I were around and reporting in the lead up to the Arab Spring, which started in 2010 and 2011. Um, before that, you had, you know, a lot of protests in, it started in Spain with the Indignados and then in France. And remember in France, they were, they were, um, they actually had placards, uh, you know, complaining about their purchasing power. And we had commented on that in our programs. I think that was during the Oracle at BBC. And um, so you're starting to see that sort of the similar thing, because remember the response to 2008 financial crisis was a whole bunch of money printing from the Fed. And so you're, you started to see these uh, complaints on the streets erupt around the world. We're starting to see it now. We're seeing it in Cuba. We're seeing it in France. We're seeing it you know, all over the world, this, this uh, certainly in Lebanon where their currency is in hyperinflation. Uh, so you're starting to see sim very similar rhyming to what happened post uh, 2008 financial crisis. Mm. But I think you can clearly see there's way more money that was printed this time around. Mm, yeah. Well, people are slow to, you know, revolt because it's dangerous and a lot of them get into a huge difficulty as a result of it. They're saying goodbye to the past they're putting their families in jeopardy but if you keep pushing people to the brink eventually they're going to revolt and so that's what we're at now the policymakers have known now for 20 years that all of the central bank policies like quantitative easing and everything related to that is um, a huge drain on the economy